Welcome back to the Simply Smarter podcast. On today's episode, Caleb and I will discuss how schools are reopening this year and what that looks like, as well as changes for the class of 2021. High school can be tough. We'll help you navigate some of the areas you need help with, including the college preparation process by providing advice for families. Every student is different and has a unique path. That's why we created this podcast. Our innovative and intentional approach builds confidence in the individual student. Listen each week to find out how students can score better on college placement tests with techniques and methods that build confidence, beat test anxiety, and identify strengths within each student. You're listening to Simply Smarter with hosts Caleb and Jill. Check out our blog at GetSmarterPrep.com for more college prep-related topics. Hey, Jill, how are you today? Good. It's been a little while. It has been. We kind of took the summer off of podcasting. Inadvertently. Yeah. Thank you, COVID. Uh (laughs) Aw. But but here we are. We're back. Yes. I'm actually really excited to be back. I love podcasting, so... I, you've kind of you've kind of swayed me a little bit. I, I was so unsure a year and a half ago, and here we are. I know so. it's crazy. It's kind of funny uh, just to touch on a couple of our podcasts uh, from before. But our very first podcast was about the yeah. Varsity Blues admission scandal, right? And, and that's and we even jumped into it like we were planning on rolling out the podcast, Simply Smarter Podcast. But then we launched into it a week earlier mm-hmm. than we had planned because it broke, right? Yeah. That it was, was so big news. It was kind of what everyone was talking about at the moment. Um, and it's back in the news. And it's back in the news. So wow. I don't know if it's all wrapped up, as if it's thoroughly wrapped up. But big news for this week, Lori Laughlin got two months in, of jail time. And her husband, Massimo, got five months. So wow. interesting, because they're the ones that pleaded not guilty for ever. Yeah. yeah that's so, pretty wild. Yeah. And for those of us like myself who generally wouldn't know, who Lori Laughlin is? Mm-hmm. She's Aunt Becky. Right? Aunt Becky. Let's, let's... Full House. <laughs> One of the best shows oh, of the boy. '90s. Oh man, <laughs> good times. Good times. This anyway, is totally random. I actually started trying to watch Family Matters. Do you remember Family oh, Matters? Oh yeah, with Urkel? Urkel. Yeah. Yeah. This is crazy. Urkel doesn't even show up until the fifth episode, and it's what? just like for like. I don't know, like a minute maybe. He made the show. I know. I was dumbfounded. Like I didn't know that. I know. Molly thought I was like losing my mind because I just obsessed over this. But like you think of Urkel when you think of Family Matters. Absolutely. First five episodes, like one really? minute total. Pretty I had crazy. no idea. I, I had know. no idea. Because I that? only remember the show with Urkel in it. Yeah, clearly. Remember when he was like Stefan or something? Was it Stefan? Stefan Urkel. Yeah, Stefan Urkel. He was like suave and <laughs> handsome and then oh, he changed yes. back into Urkel. Right, and right. He had that machine that changed yeah. and that was cool. That was really cool. I thought that was awesome. I mean, I, I like science as a kid, so yeah. like, that was my jam. <laughs> you could turn yourself into oh, Stefan. Good memories. Sorry, anyway, well, totally I guess off everyone, topic. My bad. Everyone knows how old we are. Right. Now. Products of the 90s. Exactly. Proud of it. So true. I am anyway. (laughs) Well, there's been so many changes since our last podcast, which was just the end of May. Um, Kind of, you know, just at the end of quarantine for us in Kansas. So, um, gosh, I mean... All summer, everyone's been very cautious and wearing masks. And, you know, for the state of Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri, uh, we do have to wear masks, um, you know, at at every facility indoors. Uh, So that's, you know, looked a little bit different for the summer. But I think it's still been a good summer for my family, at least. And, you know, we did have to cancel, uh, you know, a few things. But overall, it's still okay. Yeah. I mean, the kids don't really know much different they're still playing with their friends in the neighborhood and yeah. still going to the pool and we were able to visit some family up in south dakota That's awesome. a couple times so that was really nice too everything kind of slowed down a little bit yeah and somehow in the midst of all this your your middle kid hit a home run oh my goodness over the fence home it run. was amazing <laughs> <laughs> that actually was probably the highlight of the summer i love it it really was. He he's eight years old, um, and he's in a really good uh, baseball team right now, and it was just so exciting. It was one of the last tournaments that we were in. It was the last tournament. We're actually going to do one more this weekend, but we thought at the time it was the last tournament. So um, the grandparents were there for a birthday so party, cool. so they got to see it. Uh-huh. And um, the one time I didn't have my phone out recording. Seriously, Caleb. <laughs> 
I have probably 90 videos of him making it to first, second, and third. Mm-hmm. And the one time I wanted to kick myself, oh, although man. I was like very present in the moment. So that was still that, great. That is good. And then the very next time I was like, oh, I'm not going to miss this again. You know, by chance, if he hits another <laughs> homer, he's got it. He's got that feel now, you know, right. <laughs> um, but he did hit a home run and I recorded it, but it was, it was in, you know, in infield. Park. So yeah. yeah, but still back to back home runs. He was pretty excited about that. That is amazing. I yeah. love it. Highlight of my summer. What about your summer? Oh man. What summer? Like, right. <laughs> like it's disappeared, right? I know. Um, well, it's been extended, it but we'll, we'll get to that a in a minute. In a minute. So true. Um, I mean, we didn't take a trip. No. We didn't go anywhere. Um, yeah. I got to see a little bit of family. Mm-hmm. Um, not great circumstances, but it was really great to see those cousins. I hadn't seen them literally since 2001. Oh, wow. So we were all adults now and yeah. <laughs> just changed dynamics. It was just yeah. a lot of fun. Um, but I mean, it's mostly just been work and home and home and work. But we've we, got, you've got big news coming up. We do. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> um, I was, I was wondering if you're going to ask about this. So yeah. oh, this, this is just for those of you who are listening because okay. it's not wide knowledge yet. Okay. My wife and I, Molly, uh, we are adopting, and we're going to have a little girl in December. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah, Yay, so we're so excited. Congratulations. I know. It's been a, kind of a whirlwind of a process, but it's gone a little bit faster than what we initially thought it would be, mm-hmm. uh, especially with COVID. Everything got delayed, and yep. so we'll have a little girl. That is so exciting. Yeah. Are you are you ready? Do you feel like no one's no. actually ever ready? <laughs> I mean, but compared to like if it were younger Caleb, I think I'm more ready now than I would have been then. Yeah, I get that. But I also know that I'm never actually going to be ready. Right. In any way, <laughs> shape or form. The nursery is like 85% done. Yeah. Um, I still have house projects that I need to finish before she comes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you got, you've got a couple months. A couple months. I know. 111 days. Yes. Not that I'm counting. Yes. Oh, <laughs> you guys are going to be the best parents. I'm super excited to yeah, see you psyched. guys as parents yeah. and, and to meet the baby. And you know me, I love babies. Oh, so yes. it's, it's extra exciting for me as well. So can't wait. You can't wait. Big changes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wear my mask and, you know, put the hand sanitizer on. Whatever. And, yeah. Day whatever day. I have to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Test my temperature and all the things. All of them. All the things. Well, congrats. Thank you. Well, let's kind of get into what our topics are for today. We're talking about um, school, what that looks like this year. It looks very different. Very different. Uh, you know, we finished off the year barely in right. March, April, May. Yeah. And that it was kind of, yeah. The quarter was very difficult and very, very different. Difficult. Yep. Kind of ugly in places. Right. <laughs> and most schools did not successfully transition, yep. right? Uh, I think everybody thought, oh, we'll be back in mm-hmm. April. Mm-hmm. And then spring break just kept didn't, on going. Didn't happen. It's a funny meme that, that students are, are bummed that spring break is finally going to end. Oh, that's so right? true. <laughs> Six months later. <laughs> that's so true, I though. True. I know. And so school got uh, delayed another three weeks for the state of Kansas. Yeah. So that was the first big, big change of this upcoming school year. Um, and then what school looked like or will look like when we do go to school is even different. So let's kind of talk about that a little bit. It's going to be different for elementary and middle school and high school. So um, I know for elementary, we are in Olathe. I have a kindergartner, a Uh third grader, and a fifth grader. So they will be hybrid. Right. So my last name is Purcell. They will be on the B list. They'll be going to school Thursday and Friday. All day. And then all all day okay. in person and then remote learning um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay. So their first day back is going to be September 8th. Mm-hmm. So my kindergartner's first day will be at home and the second day at home, How about third that? day at school. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. Be an adventure. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's going to be so different. Um, I mean, I'm excited for them to start for sure. Yeah. Like they are ready. Yeah. Um, my, th- my fifth grader is actually in tutoring at this mm-hmm. very moment. Um, oh. she needed to start a little bit earlier and, and work out some of her issues with reading, but we're, um, excited for, for those changes as well. Um, so she kind of needs to start a little bit earlier, but the That's rest awesome. of them, yeah, start September 8th and then it's going to be crazy. We'll see what it looks like, right? Yeah. And so what is, what are the parameters that they're using to determine like if you're going to stay in person part of the time or yeah. if going online or it's a do whole... we get to go back to in person like full Maybe. time? Maybe. Maybe. maybe who knows maybe <laughs> it is it depends on the gating criteria um and that's going to look different it's it's every 14 days they reevaluate so um it's i think it's what is it you know below 15 percent um and positive tests are steady and decreasing with the new cases um it's it's kind of a mess and I don't even know if they're like actually following it to a T. Yeah. Um, it kind of got shifted a little bit. I think, I think when they, the school districts initially kind of adopted this from mm-hmm. the County, mm-hmm. I think that it was 10%, um, positive test rate was kind of the national average and yep. that's gone up. So I think yeah. some of the schools are pushing to make that go up mm-hmm. along with it. Um, because here in, here in, Johnson County, we're sitting at I think ten and a half numbers, right? You had, yeah, we're about ten and a half percent. Yep, we're at ten um, and a half right now, and that was just from this morning at seven fifty-five. So, a fourteen-day moving average is at ten and a half. So, per one thousand people, one hundred thousand people, we're at uh, one hundred one thirty-seven point eight cases. Yeah. So, because we're in between that ten and fifteen percent, we're at least in the red, but because it's increasing. Yeah. And not steady or decreasing, it may mean remote only mm-hmm. at some point. Right? Yep. Yep. For elementary. At least, yes. At least that's what I've been now, reading. For middle school and high school, they are remote. Already with the red. Yes. And the red yes. is, like I said, between 10 and 15% or 15% and higher is always going to be remote. Mm-hmm. But between 10 and 15% and a decline or steady rate. Yes. Okay. It's it's Wild. a little confusing. It's a lot to look at, a lot to take in. Um, and of course, that's going to change, you know, on a daily basis. But, you yeah, know. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. <laughs> I think there are a number of schools, uh, whether it's uh, DeSoto or... Shawnee Mission or Blue Valley, who are the the older kids, and, and I think Alaith is probably in this boat too. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but they're all going to be start completely online, yes. at least for the first 28 days. Yes, correct. Okay, correct. So that'll yeah. be be interesting. Um, hopefully, teachers have the resources that they need mm-hmm. to be su- as successful as possible. Yeah, I, I know from personal experience. I I've been sitting on a Zoom call for eight hours uh, a day once a month. Mm-hmm. And man, dude, I'm drained at the end Exhausting. of those days. So, yeah, yeah. So hopefully these kiddos can can last six hours a day or whatever it may be in their particular case. I, I'm a little worried about that. I am. I mean, there are definitely different things that I am worried about. That that being one of them. Um, you know, just what what does this day look like? Because yeah. we don't have we don't have that definition yet. Right. We don't know what the day is going to look like. I've heard that, you know, kids are going to have to be logged in for six hours a day, um, you know, per the school district to complete a school year. Right. Um, well, another, another change is that the, um, schools are starting 20 minutes earlier to kind of make up for that three weeks, Interesting. which makes sense. That's not a huge change. That's very manageable, not a big deal. So for elementary, they're starting, you know, at eight o'clock instead of eight 20. Okay. Um, and then it gets pushed up, you know, earlier for middle school and high school as well. Gotcha. So that's not, not a huge change, something that's very doable. Um, but yeah, it's the whole, we don't know what the day is going to look like. You know, what does that look like? The teachers are teaching for three hours a day and then there's three hours of video. What does that look like for specials? You know, for, I mean, I'm I'm personally talking about elementary age because that's Mm. what is affecting me. But even as far as high school, you know, what does that look like? Gym? Do you have gym? (laughs) In middle school, do you have gym? I'm not sure how that works. I haven't I haven't heard a whole lot about that. I think the core subjects are going to be hard enough, right? Yes. Like to figure out how to do these different pieces, and especially in math and science. Maybe it's because it's a little bit more of my background. Mm-hmm. But that's what I I think that's just so difficult to learn remotely or not have all the resources you absolutely need for mm-hmm. those. Or like a lab. How do you do a lab? A yeah. Lab, right. True. 
So I, I know that there have been some private schools who the teacher would just straight up do like a science mm -hmm. experiment in, in his kitchen, right? Hey, that's and cool. And videotape it so like people could see it. Yeah. But it was just clearly like the volcano. Not the same. Like the volcano, the volcano with, what is it, vinegar and baking soda? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Food coloring? I never got to do that one. But I also was. You never did? I never did it. I literally just did that with my kids. Did you? Over quarantine. Nice. I'm like a science teacher. You and are. I didn't even know it. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> that is the extent of my science experience. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> but even even like music and choir. Right. How, what is that going to No idea. What does that look like? Right? I Can I you was in I was in band Zoom? as a kid. Un <laughs> For choir? <laughs> you might be off that a little be, bit. <laughs> it could be interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can't just cancel those classes. You wouldn't think. I'd hope not. Yeah, know, like band. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely going to look different. We'll figure it out. We'll get through this year. Time will move on. And by this time next year, hopefully we're like, oh, remember right. when school was so crazy <laughs> last year and we had no idea what was going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hopefully man. we know a lot more in a year. If we, we don't. Should. We should. <laughs> Yikes. My, my tender spot is for my kindergartner, who this is his first year yeah. of real school. He did two right. years of preschool, but um, like I don't get to walk him into the building. Right. I don't get to set him on his little desk and oh. take pictures and those sweet moments and, you know, hold his hand to go into yeah. school because it's such a big school and little Compared kid, right? To, right. Yeah. I mean, it's a big, it's a big deal. Mm. So I try not to dwell on that. And I think it, it does soften it a little bit when he is going to be home. Home for the first two days yeah so i think that will help kind of transition him so sure there are pluses and minuses of um you know remote learning i guess <laughs> we'll see how that goes right yeah, yeah. but let's see talk if you about feel the... the same way and i know <laughs> i month. know right exactly but. i might just be in a corner with a snickers bar <laughs> with a box of tissues <laughs> If nothing I'm else, fine. It's I'm good. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. At, at least there's going to be some structure. Yes. Right. There's going to be some expectations. Mm -hmm. They're going to be learning a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, awesome. for sure. Yep. Exactly. Let's talk about some of the changes for the class of 2021 specifically. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so those of you who have seniors uh, or rising seniors still, mm -hmm. um, there there have been a few schools that have started. So I'm just going to refer to them as seniors. Yes. Is that okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. So. The, for the class of 2021, a lot of schools have actually gone test optional. Um, and so that is one piece of the puzzle to be aware of. But let's dig into that a little bit more because I've heard a lot about that and it sounds great. It's test optional. Great. We, we can just submit your scores. Yeah, we don't have to do this. Yeah. That's a huge piece, um, you know, that a huge chunk of time that we don't have to study yeah. for and anxiety for the test. Right. Um, but what exactly does that mean? So... <sighs> And again, it's going to look different at every single school. So mm -hmm. that is also going to be very annoying because some schools will say that they're test optional, but mm -hmm. maybe the acceptance rate is way lower for a student who doesn't submit scores compared to a student who does submit scores. Right. Because, yeah. again, it's that subjective. If you didn't submit scores, you probably they're, they're going to kind of assume that you aren't scoring in the range that they would like. Right. right? There's a natural it, whether it's right or wrong, I think mm -hmm. there's a natural inclination toward that. Yep. And then we have to remember that. Te so that's kind of the test optional versus test blind. And then the other piece of it is if you are independently wealthy and, and you're going to pay for for your student school and that that's totally an option for some families, that's fantastic. Or, or again, maybe there's a savings plan that, that's been going on for quite, for yep. 18 years. Like, yeah, that's awesome. But. It all rarely are there going to be scholarships associated with test optional. Yes. A lot of schools are still working on creating their matrix. I, I talked to six schools just this week. Oh, interesting. Um, I talked to KU, K State, Missouri State, uh, Mizzou, a couple others in the yeah, area. Yeah, a lot of the local schools yeah, around. Yeah, and I was just curious to see what they were going to be doing. Um, and it's interesting to see some of the changes and trends. Uh, each of the schools that I talked to were going to super score for the ACT. Awesome. For scholarships. Okay. 
KU and, and most of them were going to super score for admission as well, but KU is not super scoring for admission, just scholarships. Okay. Which is not again, admission, just scholarships. Kind of like the okay. University of Arkansas, right? Okay. Yeah. Like for admission, they won't super score, but on the other side of campus and financial aid, they will. And this is where it just gets messy, right? You think two schools should, like KU and K State should have identical things because they're so. They're in the same state. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're the sponsored by the Board of Regents, like mm-hmm. whatever else. But even their policies are different. But even within one school, the policies are different. So, so it gets kind of messy. Do and your research. Yeah, every, for sure. Yeah. Just dig in and, and see what they need. You have to do your research. Yeah. This is another interesting piece on my side. Uh, Missouri State actually told me that they will use weighted GPAs even in order to make awards and scholarships, mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting because yeah. even on the, on their website, the scale goes like the, the top scholarship is if you have a 28 or higher and you have a 3.9 to 4.0. But if you have a 4.4, yeah, <laughs> guess what? Exactly. You're above it. So exactly. you're kind of in the money there. Yeah. It's kind so of now interesting. Now just focus on your ACT. <laughs> right. Gosh. So. Yeah. It's so different for each one. It's very interesting. So that, that's kind of the testing side. I think the biggest change, even though that's a huge change already, I think a lot of students, probably 70, 80% of students had taken an ACT or an mm-hmm. SAT prior to COVID yep. or amidst COVID, COVID right? Yep. Well, because we did get the Kansas, uh, as the state of Kansas, yeah. we did get the February test in right. before and everything so was shut down. Every junior in the state of Kansas who went to a public school had the opportunity to take an ACT. Mm-hmm. So I, that's, I think most students have taken it. Yep. Now, the thing that's going to be different is if they are not if, if if they aren't actually requiring ACT scores and sixth semester transcripts again the end of last yes. last year was just a mess yes not very reflective arguably the most important semester in a student's grades mm-hmm. and seventh semester may not be fully accurate because we don't we still don't know what it's going to look like and right. every school district is doing something different like yeah. absolutely different well and they've been out of school for nearly six months right so we have all these different pieces so if they aren't evaluating scores act scores or sat scores and they're not really able to fully evaluate a student's academic record like yeah. what are they making these decisions based upon right i think that's the craziest part of this so i i'm what is that gonna look like i'm encouraging students who are looking at more selective schools to really hone in on their their interview mm-hmm. really focus on their their essays yeah the essay piece you gotta stand out in some way right yeah and then the other big piece is demonstrate interest way more important than any other year mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah make sure you're even if you can't visit campus I, I actually this is interesting University of Oklahoma another one that I called yesterday actually. yeah so they um, they are actually doing in-person tours oh they are isn't that amazing like I I didn't think there was a college in the US that was doing that but they are actually doing on-campus tours so students can still come check things out and again everything's modified it's exactly be smaller yeah groups I'm sure and everything else. Uh, yeah that's not surprising but students can actually get to campus okay so if you're interested in the University of Oklahoma make sure you go visit yeah right yeah. that's that demonstrated interest yep or if you if if you, none of your schools are doing on-campus tours make sure that you are attending different seminars yep. presented by webinars the, by the school. yeah make sure you're you're kind of doing the, the virtual campus tour mm-hmm. thing and, mm-hmm. and asking questions and engaging with the admissions counselor because yep. those are the things that are gonna I think put you over the top in this very strange year that is 2021. What kind of weight do you think that has demonstrated demonstrated interest on the admission counselor and the mission process? Again, I, th- I say this all the time. I think it depends on the school, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it could this year in particular have a weight of up to even a third, like really? which is crazy. Like in years past, I would have said like maybe eight to ten percent. Yeah. Right. Like that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty valuable. Yeah. Like that could sway things one yeah. way or another. But I think it could be up to a third this year, hmm. just because okay. there's so little good data to go from. And if they're trying to evaluate two students and they don't have a whole lot of information on them, like what else are they going to do? Right. And for and to me, in my opinion, I would think demonstrated interest. Like if you're really interested in two or three colleges, that's pretty easy to do. Yeah. You know, you're going to be talking to the admissions counselor. You're going to want to tour. Right. You're going to want to know as much about that college as possible. Yeah. So that should be a really easy piece to fit in. Engage. Yes. Again, it takes that. It takes a little bit of initiative and some responsibility, but. 
this, for a lot of students, school doesn't start for another two and a half weeks. So yeah. in two and a half weeks, think about how much you can accomplish if, yeah. you're, if, you're, if you're a senior, right? Exactly. Awesome. Anyway. Well, and they've added national test dates they to did. the fall schedule as True. well. I should have mentioned that earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we'll talk about it now. That's cool. <laughs> so this is September 12th is an existing test date. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about the existing and then we'll talk about the ones sure. that they've added in. And then the next one is October 24th and then December 12th. Those are just the kind of traditional test dates that have been there for for years. Yeah. And then they've had the other pieces, the the Sunday testing mm-hmm. right? um, mm-hmm. the, on September 13th, the day after the 12th. Yes. And the 25th, right after October 24th. Yep. So those those are traditionally there. They've just opened them up a little bit more. Yep. Uh, so, so more students can test on those dates. Yeah, makes sense. They've also added September 19th, October 10th, October 17th. Yeah. So three more yeah. brand new test dates. Right. And it's interesting to see ACT's language with all of this. Um, a lot of things have changed on their side, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. so they were supposed to be rolling out their their individual section testing. Yes, and, in September. Yeah, like in two and a half weeks. Yeah, right? and that's, yeah. They they push that until at least until the spring. But they haven't actually given a date yet, have they? Yeah. Not Just that 2021. I've seen, but I, I have seen twenty twenty one. So they. That that is that's a big change for a lot of our, particularly the seniors, mm-hmm. right? Class of twenty twenty one, they were kind of banking on being able to come back and take that one section yes. over again and boost it. Of course. Well, that's gone, unfortunately. Bummer. So, um, but but they did that in order to get as many students in, particularly uh, showing preference to the class of twenty twenty one. They wanted to make sure as many students could come in and test, get a score under their belt in case they needed it for the scholarships or if a school did go test optional so that they still had that information. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I I think that's totally fair. Mm -hmm. Then they also had the rollout issues. They had some issues with their their website. They rolled out a new portal, which is probably not the right time to do all of this (laughs) all at once. What is it called? My ACT? Mm -hmm. So they had some hiccups early on. Um, I think part of the issue and then I'm inferring from my experience with April June, yes. and July yes but I think a lot of test sites did not get back to them in time so mm-hmm. they were trying to delay and trying to delay to make sure that they gave students as many options as possible and I just don't think that they heard back from a lot of the site coordinators yeah and some of that is the site coordinators don't know because the school districts don't know right 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 so like it's just a cascading effect here right and we, we, I mean, personally, our staff has called so many different test sites, <laughs> test sites, and they said, no, we are, or no, you know, yes, we are, or, no, we're not. Right. So, like, okay, well, let's time. just let our students know. And then it, and then it changes last minute. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had We had a couple those. students in July who they found out about their test sites two days, was canceled two days before mm. the test. I actually, we had a student who t- tested in North Carolina. Oh, wow. Or should I say, was scheduled to test in North Carolina, and they canceled it 20 minutes oh, before man. they were going to open the doors. That's just oh, straight that up depressing. Ah, poor kid. All that work. I know. That he put into that. I know. So so sad. So if you've gotten in for a test in June and Ju- June or July, kudos to you. Yeah. <laughs> because not everyone was as lucky as you were. Yeah, exactly. Especially the June test. I mean, there was a lot of cancellations for June. Yeah, for sure. It was still pretty early. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you got that in, that's excellent. Well, what are the next steps that we can talk about um, being proactive from this point forward? I, th- I think one of the big things, if you haven't started this already, um, for for a senior, you need to jump on it now. Right, right now. Right now. <laughs> you have two extra weeks. Go. <laughs> if you are if you are a parent of a sophomore or junior, this is something that I would encourage you to start sooner rather than later, and and that's just building out a quote unquote resume. Now, yes. what I mean by resume is not like you need to. <laughs> format this just right. It needs to be on one page. It's it's more of like a spreadsheet going. Uh, Have a Google sheet with the family. Everybody has access access to it. And then just start adding different activities. Yeah. This should be extracurricular activities, volunteer hours. Sports. Absolutely. Work hours. Yes. All these different pieces that I, I, I we want to make sure that the application process is is as easy as possible mm-hmm. when we get to it. And what happens if you don't write it down, you usually forget. forget. And honestly, like it may be something that's 
actually pretty valuable and a lot and pretty important. Again, maybe you're looking at. Um, uh, I, I'm blanking on the name of the school that I had in my mind. Um, uh, it's Describe a the in colors. O- in o- <laughs> I, I love that. Red and black. Oh, Ohio State. No. I don't know. <laughs> Shoot. Um, anyway, there are a lot of schools that really, really heavily emphasis, have a heavy emphasis in service, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So community service is very important. And let's say you remember three quarters of it. That's great. But that's 25% of the hours that you did. Yeah. That leave it on the table. Exactly. Like, and, and it may not be traditional hours that you normally think of, but maybe there were some one-off things or maybe mm-hmm. for every Saturday for a month during sophomore year, you, you volunteered at this place. Well, that's yeah, a, that's write that big down. Yeah, yeah, add that exactly. in there. Those are going to be the things that could help set you over, over the top. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Again, write it down and get that list going. The, the other thing, and this is, seems kind of weird, but on that list, also add classes that the student has taken mm-hmm. and the grades for each. Okay. Because Every class or what kind of classes are we talking about? I say every single one. Okay. A lot of schools will only look at core Mm-hmm. your core classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so like Iowa State, they actually base your scholarship and admittance and everything else based upon this really weird score that <laughs> half of it is, probably even more than half of it, is how did you do in your core classes? How did you do? Not how many did you take? Both. Oh, both. both. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. So a big piece of it is just how many did you take, right? Mm-hmm. But then how you did on them. Your GPA plays a big yes. piece of that too. Yeah. And they'll recalculate your GPA. Unlike Missouri State that I mentioned earlier, which will actually just straight up use your weighted, your weighted GPA. GPA. <laughs> okay. Most schools will recalculate that. Oh my goodness. That's interesting. And then your AP and IB classes as well. Yeah. I think making sure you're tracking that information. You have access to the scores so you can easily send them down the road. Yep. And even a little place where you keep all of your login information, whether it's the ACT or college board or yeah. <laughs> whatever it may be. I think those are going to be useful tools too. Absolutely. And now let's talk about the timeline a little bit because it is, it has, has it shifted for the class of 2021 or the what does that look not. like now? They have not. They have not. So most early action, early decision deadlines are still going to be either November 1st or November 15th. So I find that rather interesting. I mean, I know that ACT has given three new test dates and opened up five more you know but i just i find it interesting that they haven't shifted that early action and early decision and and there may be some schools that have but in my research i haven't because everything else has changed literally in the world everything else has changed I i think that there will be fewer students applying in that method. Mm-hmm. Um, That's going to be the big change. Which will be kind of a shift. Mm-hmm. Most schools across the country are still working in rolling admissions, which just basically means as soon as you apply, you're going to hear either immediately or within mm-hmm. the next two weeks whether mm-hmm. you're accepted or not, right? Yeah. Um, it's typically more selective or highly selective schools that offer an early action or early decision option and then also follow the regular decision deadline in in typically in January, but sometimes as late as February 1st. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I, I think those deadlines aren't, aren't going to shift for better or for worse. At yeah. least there is a constant, right? Yep. Um, and I think if they changed it all, it would be even messier and more frustrating oh. in ways. Um, and because I think a lot of those students have, have started looking at those deadlines already and mm-hmm. now all of a sudden they shift and yeah. that's not fun either. Yeah. No, not at all. Okay. So that's the timeline piece. So that's the basic timeline. And again, if you can get your applications in before school, even better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but but try to have everything everything kind of wrapped up uh, for, by October. Okay. Uh, so you'll get accepted based on a sixth sixth semester transcript. Uh, so that I think that that's going to be fine. That's all going to be squared away already. Yeah. Um, and if you need to take a test again, you can still take one of the September or October tests, and mm-hmm. they, they should be good for rolling admissions or early admission or whatever it may be. Okay. All right. What about essays? What do we need to know about essays? Yeah. So the more time you can spend on these, the better. We mentioned it earlier. So much of the process for class of 2021 is going to be pretty subjective this year. So I want to make sure that students put their best foot forward in this regard. And and I know we've, we've worked with quite a few students in the, writing their college essays this summer, and it's been a fun experience. Uh, I know that there have been fewer opportunities out there. Uh, but uh, I mean, we would love to help your student craft their best mm-hmm. essay and and kind of set themselves apart in this way. I, I think that in 
ad- admission or, or at least applicants is going to be down at most schools. Okay. So if you're looking at more selective schools, this is the year to like really push it. Maybe you have a couple more reach schools on yeah. your list than normal. Yeah. Because maybe you have a little bit better shot. Mm-hmm. But that's only to say if your entire application profile is is pretty stellar. Yeah. Right? Okay. Good advice. Um, you, we could have a maybe a slightly lower ACT score than what we would have had to have last year, or may have to have uh, if you're. Right, if you're a junior, right? Yeah. It's a class of 2022. Yeah. So there are some benefits maybe in that regard. Now, again, on the flip side of that, that also means there are fewer students going to college or mm-hmm. fewer students going to trying to go to selective schools, which is also not a good thing. Right, right. But but it, kind of be aware of these situations. If you're if you're on the side where you were, were hoping to go to California for school, but now you need to stay local, well, really jump on that that bandwagon. Make sure you're you're covering your bases there. Or if you were kind of thinking you were going to go to California or the East Coast or wherever else, and you're kind of questioning it, like maybe you should think about these other these other components that go into it. So let's just talk about online colleges right now because a lot of colleges are starting online. So I mean, if you're looking at coastal schools, can you start in Kansas? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, hypothetically, yes. I mean, I I was hearing about a student that we worked with in, in the years past, and she was going to school in New York City, and as of two weeks ago, she still didn't have a room. Oh right? She didn't have a place to live, right? She was supposed to yeah. show up for, for camp, to campus like last week or this week, mm-hmm. and <laughs> they didn't know where she was going to live. Yikes. So like, there's things I'm like sure that. I'm sure she's so going to have to quarantine as well. I, I think a lot of colleges there. are going to be pretty flexible in that regard. Like if you're working from home for a while or whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Um, I so think what does that look like for, reasonable. is that reduced tuition then? <laughs> of course not. There's actually a big pushback. There's a big movement. That's on, another on this podcast. Regard. Yeah. That's, Maybe we'll get into a, that one. That's the next <laughs> <another> podcast. <day. laughs> yeah. Cause we could talk all day about the long-term effects of what this looks like for higher ed Mm -hmm. and admissions. And yeah, it's kind of crazy. So much. That's the next episode. (laughs) (laughs) No guarantees on that. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Don't get Caleb started on it. (laughs) (laughs) You can go on and on. Oh man. All right. Well, so maybe not a total mess. There's there's still some good structure in there. Yep. Kind of have at least an idea Right. Mm-hmm. Even though it may may shift. So have some flexibility, set yourself up for success. Mm-hmm. And that success is going to look different this year than than most. It will. Those are the big takeaways. Yeah. And stay strong and keep moving forward. You yeah. know, don't, don't get disheartened. Right. I mean, it's always going to be a challenging time, you know, from February of this year to maybe February of 2021. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You know, it might. It's going to look different. Everything's going to look different. Yeah. But um, we are here to help your student we always will be um and we've done we've done online tutoring before we have mm-hmm. that available we have in-person tutoring uh, we also have our free practice tests if your student hasn't taken a practice right. test yet exactly. either so um, we do have the option of doing those online if you don't feel comfortable with in person yeah. um so just let us know we we are flexible and we want to cater to your student so yep yeah. If we have Fair any time. other questions, please let us know. Um, you can email us, uh, marketing at getsmarterprep.com um, or, you know, just subscribe to our podcast. We always have or hope to have helpful inter- information for you guys. Um, of course, we have our Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter accounts that you can follow as well. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye.